everyone, this is your host Prasha and welcome to Her STEM Stories episode number 80, another solo episode with just you and me. Going forward, I'll come to you with a solo episode on Mondays and an interview on Wednesdays. If you want to hear me talk about particular topics about your STEM career or you have any questions, make sure you send me an email at herstemstory at gmail.com. So today's episode is about what not to do in your early STEM careers. So let's get started. So this is just a gist of the whole talk that I gave over the weekend. Make sure you use the links to listen to the entire talk. But why do I get to give you this advice? I get to give you this advice because I have a bachelor's in chemical engineering, a master's in mechanical engineering. I moved to the U.S. all by myself seven years ago. I was hired one year ahead of graduation. I moved six times in six six years. I'm one of the youngest managers in my plant. I have I have mentored five people in about five years, and I've also been mentored by tons and tons of people. So I think there is a lot of value in everything that I've learned, and I really want to share it with you. So before we get started, I really want you to assess where you're at in your STEM career education or journey. I want to make it clear that this is not just for people who work in the industry, but also for the people who are just probably starting out their PhD careers or who are transitioning or mid-transition or people who are transitioning roles or careers altogether, or for people who are in their postdoc situation or uh, even in you know their masters, they're just getting out, starting, starting to work. So this is not specific to any industry. And these uh, tips will help you in anywhere while you're transitioning. So think about how you feel right now on a scale of one to five. When I polled this to the audience, uh, about 50% of the audience was split in being okay and being happy. So I wanted to make sure that we address that because you really need to know where you're at today and how these tips can help you get to where you want to be, which I hope is to be really happy with your STEM journey. Uh, I want to give a pro tip here, which is that new graduates, especially new graduates, or people who are just getting out of the education system, are used to a learn, do, results, reward loop. So you learn something, you do it, like you do it in the exam, you get a result, and you get a reward, you get to the next semester. But In the industry, in real life in general, employers don't want you to do that, even in in PhD and stuff. They don't let you learn stuff. You have to do stuff and then learn and then iterate and then get results eventually. So it's very important to remember that learn, do doesn't work in real world. Do and learn works. It's not your fault. It's just how the system is set up. So very important because this, I think, is, is phenomenally helpful for someone who's struggling because they're hoping that someone will teach them how to do it. I've struggled with that a lot through all my transitions from high school to to bachelor's, bachelor's to master's, master's to uh, even in, when I was working in the lab, from lab to my career as well. So learn to results reward doesn't work in the real world. Do learn, iterate results, and then eventually you will get the reward. The rewards are more prolonged than in school systems. So it's very important to remember that you are programmed to expect a reward, but it's not gonna come. So it's very important to acknowledge that. So let's get started with the six things you shouldn't expect, uh, you shouldn't do in your STEM career. Uh, number one, don't expect every day to be a challenge. I know this is weird, every day, every day should be a challenge. Why can't it be a challenge? But a lot of people uh, realize, forget that um, not every day is a challenge. Uh, every day, some days are mundane. There are a lot of mundane tasks that go into, um, you know, nine to five jobs. If if I were to talk specifically about my example, so your jobs, research, projects, all will have a zigzag curve. Some days will be super challenging. Some days will be boring. Some days will be um, good results, bad results, and it'll just be a zigzag. Um, path and just learn to accept that it'll help you save a lot of energy and it'll also help you appreciate these downtimes these small pockets of downtime so in in a nine to five job you might get a whole weekend off and when you get the weekend off that is a great place to enjoy time with your family and it's a really good time like a downtime that means not every day is super challenging so 
remember that those down times are where imagination thrives and and creativity thrives and you need that time uh, to take care of yourself and your family. So remember, don't expect every day to be super challenging. Uh, some days will be boring. And especially if you're just like a recent graduate, the first few months of your job are going to be super downtime, like boring, because people are not going to give you a lot of responsibility right out of the door. So remember, that's the time to learn and and observe and absorb as much as you can. Number two, don't forget to pitch your ideas. So a lot of people don't realize that uh, you can pitch your ideas to your manager. You are expected to come up with ideas. So come up with ideas to save money, time, or resources. They're all very, very important to any organization. And pitch them like an entrepreneur. Pitch them like, this is the problem. This is my solution. This is how we'll get there. And this is what I expect the result to be. When you do this on a more daily basis, on a more regular basis, then you become like a star performer and people really love that you're taking initiative. This is something that a lot of employers are frustrated with, with millennials where they may not take a lot of initiative. And so it's really important to take initiative, uh, especially, um, you know, when you're just getting used to a lot of different things. I don't say give ideas right out of the bat. Uh, make sure you have understood the whole business. And, you know, I would give it about a, about six months to a year before you really start pitching big ideas. But in the meantime, also, you can pitch small ideas. Like if a process is all paper-based, you can say, hey, is there a way to make this online? Can I make an Excel spreadsheet? Can I make a macro? You know, these kind of things. So when you think out of the box and pitch those small ideas, people will love you for helping them out because Everyone wants to save money, time, and resources. I don't care which industry you work in. So pitch ideas regularly before expecting promotions. So remember that. Please remember that. Number three, don't be impatient. A little patience goes a long way. If you're impatient with results, if you're impatient with with the next steps, with with rewards, and uh, with everything that you thought should happen faster... uh, Take a step back and slow down. Patience is your best friend um, because this is not like a, um, you know, this is not a degree. If you're nine to five, it's not like a degree that has to end like in a year. It's You're in it, in, in it for the long haul. So it's a marathon. So pace yourself and be patient. I struggle with this all the time. I don't have the best patience, but I recognize it and I try to work on it. So be patient with your results, be patient with your actions and be confident of yourself because The more you're patient with your results, um, the more persistent you're with your actions, you automatically will build confidence because you know where you're going. Number four, don't underestimate the power of picking up the phone, which is don't underestimate old school traditional networking. Network with your colleagues, but also network with higher ups and build relationships with people who may be in different departments. A lot of times companies struggle with what we call silos where people just work with the people that they know. People don't network a lot. They don't know a lot of other people. They don't know the whole holistic view of the problem. And it's very important to have those connections. So pick up the phone, talk to the person that you work with every day and try to learn more about them. Be genuinely interested. It doesn't take more than 10, 15 minutes to really just give someone a call. I do this all the time, especially when you're in crisis, uh, any kind of big, small crisis where you think the communication through the email is getting a little bit confusing uh, or it's getting a little bit um, you know, tedious or it's getting too long. Pick up the phone, talk to them and stay in touch. So I've traveled a lot in my job. And one of the things that has really helped me is to meet a lot of different people and work with a lot of different products and factories. And what I've taken back from them, that is that now that when, when I get stuck in some problems, I would call some of these people because I know they work in similar fields or they have may have similar problems. And I also use that opportunity to kind of learn how their life's going and stay in touch. This is really helpful with executives because they don't have enough time a lot of times to help you. But if you make just a little bit of time to say, hey, how's it going? Just want to wish you Merry Christmas. Um, or even if you just set up an appointment and said, let's catch up and put 15 minutes on their calendar, I am more than sure that they will reach out to you. I did this with our previous CEO at the company I work and I wrote to him and I said, I'm so curious to know how people become CEOs. And he said, let's chat. It was such a huge thing. I got to chat with him for an hour and I got to ask him so many fantastic questions. So never underestimate the the 
power of old school networking and just authentic networking with people that you work with, not always looking for how can I get to the next company or the next job or the next opportunity, but really taking in where you're at today and and really building those relationships. Number five, don't forget your team. Whether you know it or not, you are working in a team. And always, always remember to make time to spend with them in terms of brainstorming, which is just like brain dumps. This again will go and feed into the, the, the point we talked about pitching new ideas because you'll be able to use and leverage the, the knowledge of these people who are from different teams and who really help you or who are even in your same team but have different set of experiences. I really, really value this point because I've come up with really good solutions at, at work and in life in general because I have remembered to ask more people about their opinion. And Learn to foster diversity and inclusion and really use it in your life. Diversity and inclusion is not just a big fancy word uh, for marketing or, you know, for for um, hiring purposes, but it's really what can be a game changer in your problem solving skills. When you have diverse people in a room and you include their ideas into your problem solving, you solve problems faster. So please remember, you're not alone and remember to include your team members. Don't forget your team. Number six, and finally, don't forget that you're unique. Now, I believe in this with all my heart and soul, and I work very hard on myself in terms of finding my own uniqueness. So don't try to blend in and try to be yourself. So STEM fields need you to be yourself to solve better problems and solve them faster. Uh, If you try to copy the other people or if you try to blend in, then we're going to just be one step further away from uh, solving really big grand challenges and big problems at any workplace. So please don't blend in and try to own up to your uniqueness and try to use that because you may have a skill. So if you have a presentation skill, which is stronger than your rest of the team, you should be using that to help your team. And if someone in your team is really good at data, they should be working with data. And, you know, you have to leverage all these qualities because you by yourself can't do everything. And it's better that you accept it and you work with the biggest gift that you have of diversity. Um, and I'm telling you, even if people may look alike, even if you don't have the picture diversity or the or the or the traditional form of diversity, all of us are unique in our own self. So what I'm sure if you don't have a lot of diversity diversity in your team, um, of course you should talk to your HR and you should you know think like ask your company about their programs and stuff like that. But even then, people that you're that are on your team are diverse because they have diverse experiences and we're all super unique in our own self. So work with that. Don't shut off your other interests that make you unique. So whenever you have some downtime and you have weekends. Make sure that you reflect on hobbies, activities, and interests that make you unique and make space for them in your life. This is so important because this has been a game changer for me since the show started, since her STEM story started, and it has become what it has become uh, a big part of my life. But it has also helped me be so much more of myself when I go to work. And I absolutely love it because I learn so many new things and I get to employ them right away at work. So Don't forget that you're very unique. So just quickly sum it up. (laughs) Number one, don't expect every day to be challenging. Be comfortable with mundaneness and use it to avoid exhaustion. Number two, don't forget to pitch your ideas. Pitch projects of all sizes in a professional way and show the organization that you really care. Number three, don't be impatient. Be patient with results, people, progress, and change. Uh, Strategy takes time to work and just Reminding yourself that is going to be really helpful. Number four, don't underestimate traditional networking. Networking with people above you by being interested in their work and stories can be super game changing and can be super, super helpful because you'll find your support system wherever you are in your STEM career. Don't forget, number five, don't forget that you have a team and you are never alone in any projects. Remove communication barriers and create collaboration. Pro tip here, when a new team member joins a team or when you meet a new person that is going to work with you more often, always give them this one question. What's your preferred form of communication? When you say that, you actually open doors for some 
very amazing conversations going forward because this is just such a wonderful way of uh, making sure that you're accommodating whatever their communication style is. This will save you a lot of miscommunication over time, which happens all the time. And so you will be able to really understand what this person prefers. It doesn't mean that they will not use emails or they will not use phones, but they may have a preference which might help you, especially in the time of crisis. And number six, and finally, don't forget about your uniqueness. You are super special, so please protect yourself from blending in and becoming someone else. And please invest in your hobbies and take time to really spend time with yourself and learn more about yourself. It's super, super important. So I hope all this was super helpful. And if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure you tell me by <laughs> sending me either an email at herstemstory at gmail.com or DMing me at uh, Herstem Story on Instagram because a lot of you have loved this talk. So I wanted to make sure this reaches more audiences around the world. So again, thank you so much for listening. And I hope these six things will help you be successful in your STEM careers. Thank you so much for listening. And I'll see you again on Wednesday. Bye.